Ergo Proxy always held a special place in my heart as it was one of the first anime shows I ever watched. And I was just a kid back then, so it's obvious that I understood almost nothing of the show. And this gave me an excuse to dive even deeper into the secrets of Ergo Proxy and try and truly understand it better. And after I was able to do so, I decided to share this knowledge I found about the show to help others who are just as confused about the series and sort of help them understand what the hell is going on exactly. So, before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and also, don't forget to press that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new content. So this show has a very much deeper meaning to everything in it, and is philosophical in its approach. And its story events, after all, is about the death of the world and the end of life as we know it. But the real question that the anime never answered was what exactly happened to reach such an outcome? And to lead the world in such destruction and devastation. Well, you see, it all started 5,000 years ago, before the events of the first episode even. After consecutive methane hydrate explosions on Earth, the ecosystem crumbled and humans lost 85% of the population. They had to do something about it to ensure the survival of humans and the best thing they could come up with was the Proxy Project. But first, what remained of the original humans retreated into space, leaving the Earth behind to heal on board the boomerang ships, conveniently called. So since they were going to return to Earth eventually, someday. These original humans created the Proxy Project by creating superhuman godlike beings from Amorite cells, which are highly susceptible to sunlight, something that we will mention later on, and sending them to Earth. They created 300 of them in total. The proxy's job were simple, rebuild Earth, govern the dome cities, and safeguard the humans inside of it. The cruelty of the original humans knew no bounds though, for their mission was much more sinister one than you think. The original humans allowed the proxies the ability to create artificial wombs and beings that seemed human, but they didn't have the ability to procreate and, well, most of the time seemed like they were brainwashed. So why is that? These humans you find in the show, living in the city dome, are pseudo-humans, created only to make waste become compost and revive the world quicker. It is even seen in billboards that they need to create ways to lighten the burden in this world as well exist machines that help humans in their daily lives called auto reeves. They are seen throughout the series everywhere you look. And this is where the original humans plan to begin. The job of the proxies is to revive Earth and build housings and homes for them to live in. When that mission is complete, something called the Pulse of Awakening is triggered in every proxy to want to kill each other. And it is already evident from the series that a colony without a proxy is doomed to be a dead one. So after that is done, the sun will once more shine on the earth and the proxies as well as pseudo-humans will perish since they are created from the same cells. This way, the original humans on their return to earth will find only the auto reeves and well built housings and cities ready for them to be claimed. This somewhat explains the reason behind auto reeves maintaining and cleaning empty roads and houses even though nobody lives there. It was all for the sake of the original humans once they returned. And since we are already talking about auto reeves, the original humans implement a plan C in case for whatever reason the boomerang star never returns to Earth and the proxies fail their mission to revive the ecosystem then those machines would be infected with a coquito virus meant to infect them once the pulse of awakening begins giving them consciousness emotions and as much as it might seem ironic a soul this was made so that in case the originals perish as well as the pseudo humans then the human consciousness would be carried by the Reeves well at least some way in a certain extent what the original humans didn't account for in their plan was the fact the proxies have souls, emotions, and are meant to live for thousands of years. And since human brains and lives aren't meant to be this long, some of the proxies actually go mad and lose hope in their mission. Some even went as far as giving in to despair and destroying their own colonies and dome cities, raising them to the ground. Loneliness can be scary to us humans, even daunting, and we might experience it for a while in our lives, but those proxies were created to be alone for thousands of years. Just imagine the psychological strain they had to endure fighting to keep their sanity intact. With time, the proxies realized their inability to actually create true humans on Earth, and by such, they lost their reason of existence and became aimless. Well, 
ended up destroying themselves, as well as their colonies. So now everything happening that will be mentioned is 5,000 years after the Cataclysm, and is actually so close to the events of the show tying directly to it. 5,000 years have passed and Proxy One, the one responsible of the domed city of Romdo, discovers the original human's plans for Earth, and he is clearly not happy. In all his rage, anger, and disappointment, and in disbelief that his whole existence is a lie, he decides to exact revenge on the original humans the best way he could think of, by halting their proxy project and erasing all the progress they made to bring back Earth to life. To sabotage the project, he started off by destroying dome cities by launching rockets at the clueless domes, erasing them from existence, leaving nothing but rubble and ashes in his wake. His second step was to create the 301st Proxy, whom we end up knowing as Vincent Law, the main character of Ergo Proxy. Due to their loneliness and natural long life, Proxy One and Proxy Monad developed a love relationship ending up creating Ergo Proxy through a binding between the two that resembled pregnancy. Now you might be wondering what would be the point in creating one more additional proxy and what significance or difference it would make. Well, Ergo Proxy is unique. For starters, he is born for the pure intention of eradication of the original humans, created to withstand the pulse of the awakening, and he is immune to sunlight unlike other proxies, so even after the sun shines back on Earth, Ergo Proxy or Vincent will be the last man standing, and only only then will he be able to exact revenge on the original humans as Proxy One envisioned. After rebelling against the reason of his creation, as the agent of death, he asks Monad's help in erasing his proxy side memories, as he just wants to live as a human, which is kind of ironic since he betrayed Proxy One, which is the same way. But for this to work, Monad had to sacrifice herself for him, and she laid comatose ever since, creating the being called Vincent Law, a refugee from Mosk that made it all the way to Romdo. Even when the Regent decided to attack Moss to retrieve Ergo Proxy since a dome city can't survive without one, Monad was unable to protect her city from the raid, and the Regent was successful in abducting Monad back to Romdo where scientists led by a man named Daedalus did horrible experiments on her to the point of disfiguring her. But after all that torture and pain, they were finally able to create an imperfect clone of her, which is human without the proxy side, whom we came to know as Riel. This is all the important info needed to actually understand the series and know what is actually going on. Now we are finally able to tell the tale of Vincent Riel and Pino, the auto reef infected with the Kokido virus, and their adventures that took them to many places on their journey to discover the truth about the world, and the proxies as well as themselves. As the series starts, so does the Pulse of Awakening. Thanks to that, Monad awakens from her slumber and torture at the hands of Daedalus and his scientists. She's now looking everywhere for her beloved Ergo Proxy in the meantime. Vincent Law is a refugee of Mosk, applying for citizenship in Romdo. Standing in the line waiting his turn, he meets Riel Mayer, and it was love at first sight, since Riel is the clone of Monad. After all, even though they are both oblivious to this fact, at that time, Riel is investigating in occurrences where Reeves became conscious and gained a soul, which we know to be the effects of the Kokido virus. In the same episode, Vincent as Ergo Proxy smashes through the roof of a half-naked Riel's apartment, and that's when we get the memorable bathroom scene. He barged to his home since he was able to feel the presence of Monad inside of her, and for some reason, Riel felt drawn to him too, rather than fearing him. Ergo Proxy is intrigued with Riel since she is the same thing. He dreams to become a human with no proxy side to himself. In the second episode, we see a free from her shackles Monad running to Vincent while killing everyone and anything in her path to get to him, whether it was a pseudo-human or an auto-reeve. Capturing Vincent and cornering him like a mouse, he transforms to Ergo Proxy and kills Monad since he doesn't have memories of her, and only sees her as a threat. In a rampage, she kills the daughter and wife of a highly-ranked official in Romdo, losing his mind in the process and blaming Vincent for his misfortune to the point of obsession. With the Pulse of Awakening starting, so does the plan of Proxy 1 to have revenge on the original humans by mostly destroying everything on Earth. During these events, Vincent Riel and Pino, the auto reeve with the Kokido virus, are heading off to Mosk in hopes of finding answers to their questions there. This journey won't be an easy one though, especially with constant interferences of Proxy 1, and his manipulation of Vincent into accepting his proxy side. 
and his reason of existence as a harbinger of death. On their journey to Moss, the trio also meet a couple of other proxies like the bookstore proxy, whom, along with Proxy One, tried their best in reminding Vincent of his past and who he really is. It was a creepy scene to say the least, and weird too. Every time the bookstore proxy would snap his fingers, Proxy One would appear and address Vincent directly. After that, they encountered a proxy with the tedious ability of shape-shifting. And after that was done, they met the MCQ proxy who forces them into some contest-like TV show that he broadcasts all over the world. The quizzes he uses in the show are methods to kill off proxies. And if that wasn't enough to show how capable and dangerous he is, this proxy even revealed the current location of Proxy 1. In that episode as well, we are given some information of the dark fate that befell those humans who refused to leave the Earth into space and decided to remain. Over the years, they mutated into monstrous looking beings, living in cages. But even then, they had natural pregnancy as their murals revealed on the walls and the fact that Riel actually saw one of them whom is pregnant. Clearly, though, they are no longer considered intelligent beings, and instead are just like any other beast that you can't hope to communicate with. Remember the pissed high ranks official who went insane after the death of his daughter and wife? Yeah, well, Real Creed is actually the head of security in Romdo, and before losing his job as his final act, he launched missiles on the location of Proxy 1, provided by the MCQ proxy in order to exact his revenge on him. Without knowing that, in doing so, he also doomed the city of Moss to a fate darker than black, eradicating it completely just before Vincent and Rio arrive there. After arriving to Moss, Proxy One looks for Amnesia, the person in possession of Vincent's memories, whom he kills for obvious reasons, leaving behind the pendant of Vincent around his neck. The party then arrives a oh, little too late, and find the body of Amnesia with his pendant hanging from it. And since they reached a dead end, they decided to turn back and return to Romdo especially after they saw the writing on the wall left for them by Proxy One, a trail of breadcrumbs, if you wish. That leads all the way back to Romdo. In the following episodes, they meet the proxy responsible for the creation of Smile World. It's practically a copied, diluted version of Disney World. The proxy this time isn't there in person, though, and instead he invades the dreams of Pino, searching for any weaknesses Vincent, aka Ergo Proxy, might have. This part is especially important, since afterwards Pino becomes much more human and aware of the meaning of life than before. As a last ditch attempt, Proxy One uses a psychologist whom is a proxy too to try and truly understand what Ergo Proxy, or Vincent, wishes for from his existence, and he didn't like the answer at all. You see, all Vincent ever wants is to be truly human, and live a normal life with Pino and Riel and build a family with them, and they didn't like that. Not one bit. And they even try to convince him that he is nothing but a figment of an illusion, created by real split personality in hopes of driving him insane, causing him to abandon his dream. But obviously, they fail. While the trio are on their journey, we as watchers discover that Daedalus officially went bat shit insane and had created yet another clone for Monad, but this time he used Amorite cells, and the product of his work was real, a true clone of Proxy Monad, not only with the human appearance and side, but also with the powers and abilities of a proxy. Raw Creed also acknowledges the fact that people in Romdo won't survive any longer without a proxy, so he urges him to find a way for them to survive without a proxy. This project was doomed to failure, and it cost 90% of the population in Romdo their lives. Once they arrive to Romdo, Vincent transforms into Ergo Proxy again, and realizes that the one he killed in Episode 2 was none other than Monad Proxy. Meanwhile, Proxy 1 goes to Don Mayer, the grandfather of Riel, and kills him in front of her, and the statues there are actually Otter Reefs talking on behalf of the Regent. With his death, they are free now to say whatever they wished. In her rage and sorrow, Riel attempts to kill Proxy One thinking it was actually Vincent, since at this point, they still have no idea that Proxy One exists. As well as us readers, by the way, which added so much confusion to an already complicated and convoluted plot. And since she had feelings for Vincent, she was unable to pull the trigger. Then Vincent arrives in his proxy form, and things get even weirder for Riel. Then they enter a room with a blue sky and a throne in the middle of it. Sitting on that throne is none other than Proxy One, who reveals that Daedalus had already started the self-destruction sequence of Romdo. Hearing that, Riel rushes to him to stop him. In the meantime, an angel with white hair, glowing eyes, and wings appears in front of Vincent. She is the clone of Daedalus, 
hid secretly and with Monad, awakening in her, she gained this form and shape after the conversation that took place between Ergo Proxy and Proxy One about the truth of things and how vile the creators are, and them deserving punishment. Then, Rio flies off with Vincent to the sky hoping he would accompany her, to which he refuses since he is already in love with Riel. Hurt by his answer and not wanting to see him with another woman, Riel flies into the sunlight and just like Icarus, self-destructs since she was made of the same cells proxies were made of. After that, Proxy One explains almost everything we never understood about the show, briefly, however, and engages in a philosophical debate with Ergo. Seeing that there is no way to reach an agreement, a fight breaks out and Proxy One is defeated, lying on his throne, dying from both the sun and his wounds. However, in Vincent's case, he is immune to those lights and is then picked up by Riel and Pino. In the final scene, as the sun begins to seep into the world, and you can see the boomerangs returning to Earth behind Vincent. He opens his eyes and reveals blue glowing eyes, and with that, the series ends. Until this day, no one knows what happens afterwards, if he killed the humans or spared them. I guess they thought it would be better for the Watchers to decide the fate of the humans. The series sure is complicated and took quite some time to explain, so I gotta say I didn't expect it to be this long at all. I hope that this video will offer some insight and clues to things you missed in your first watch of the show, and I hope I made things much clearer for you guys. For me personally, what I never understood was the fact that the angel burned and disintegrated as soon as she touched the sky, as well as the fact that in my first run of the show, I thought proxies to be mythological beings and not beings created through some experiment, since they kept saying creator this and creator that never mentioned real humans or originals. But yeah, that's just me. Let me know in the comments below what you thought the most confusing thing was about the show. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, and I would appreciate it if you guys would like, subscribe, comment, and press on that bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new content, and be sure to share this wonderful content with your friends, with your family, and, most of all, with your other degenerate friends. Because we all know we are all degenerates here. I'm just kidding. You guys are awesome. But in any case, as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.